ethical outsourcing. Whew. I got in a little bit of legal hot water, which is absolutely bullshit bogus. A couple weeks ago for a video I posted, which has since had to be taken down. And then I followed that up with a kind of emotional rant from the heart about why I was so upset about that person's response. And I've gotten so much positive feedback, just like an outpouring of support from you guys, which genuinely touches my heart. Like it makes me so, so happy to know that I've created this community that also understands and values transparency, honesty, business ethics, like to be in good company means the world to me. So thank you guys for that. And I also got a message from Binge Clock on Fiverr, Billy, and he had the great idea that we should kind of round this little experience out by talking about the positive effects of how to do this correctly, how to do this the right way. And so in today's interview with him, he has so graciously been super transparent about his process for sourcing and choosing and hiring freelancers, but then also to transparently promote them. Because as we discussed in this interview, we as established sellers have so much privilege and that also turns into a responsibility to help others achieve the same level of success. And that happens above board. That's not something to hide away and be secretive about. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome for the very first time. All around, welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com, where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro verified copywriter for about the past nine years. And in today's video, like I said, Billy and I are chatting about ethical outsourcing and how not only to hire responsibly, how to pay fairly, but also how to promote and support the freelancers, partners, partners, freelance partners that you're choosing to work with. But before we get into that, we have to announce this week's blogger of the week. And if you'd like to be the blogger of the week, just like Hawa Balogan, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. Yeah, so I really appreciate like you reaching out to do this. This is a cool idea. And I like your concept, especially of like, a positive take on how to talk about like doing this really well instead of, you know, being negative, which I yeah. was. So um, to start, can you just like introduce a little bit about like who you are, what you do on Fiverr and like how um, this outsourcing specifically fits into your stuff? Yeah, uh, so my name is Billy McIntyre and I'm a freelance writer on Fiverr. I'm top rated, pro verified. It's my main source of income. It's been pretty much the only job that I've had since I got out of college. I got on there in 2015. I graduated six months prior and it's worked out incredibly. But before I got on Fiverr, my intention was to actually launch a website. So, uh, you know, writing was always my passion. It was always the only thing that I wanted to do. But my father was a programmer and from a young age, he said, you know, you should learn how to code. And he taught me how to code PHP, Python, SQL. So I was building websites too. And in 2014, I built a website, bingeblock.com. And while I don't ever use outsourcing for my writing, that's all me, I do it all myself, I will hire people to help me with the website. Because even though I can do PHP and Python and SQL, there are certain things that I'm not quite as comfortable with. Oh, I can't hear you. I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> um, so then, in terms of like hiring and vetting those partners, where do you find them? How do you, like what's the most important thing you look at when you're trying to decide, yes, this person will be a good fit to help me out as a partner I can really trust? I'm really fortunate in that when I'm hiring for something, I I know something about it generally, even though I can't write say uh, C or C++, and I'm not very good at designing myself. I know how to describe what I want in a lot of detail. So normally that conversation is enough. I write very specific work orders. I go over those work orders with, with the freelancers that I hire. Pretty much just a conversation. You know, I hire people who I think look established uh, on Upwork or on Fiverr. And between that and then the initial conversation, I can feel pretty confident going into it, knowing that I'm going to get what I need. Cool. And then like what, in a nutshell, makes them look established to you? Like what's the most important thing you look for? I look for reviews. Uh, you know, I do, I trust, I trust the evidence, the experience. I want to work with people who, who have done it. I've hired new people before, uh, people, you know, brand new profiles and I've had good experiences that way. But generally if I'm hiring someone, I am hiring someone who has done the work that I need them to do already. 
if someone doesn't have reviews yet, but they have work samples, does that kind of fill that gap for you? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've gone off of before. So um, most recently, I was going for a redesign on Benchblock, completely redoing everything. And just because I wanted uh, to see a lot of ideas, I hired three different people for that. Uh, two of them, very experienced, so they had a lot of reviews, a lot of experience in Upwork, but the other one did and he said that right off the bat, and it kind of did catch me when he when he said this in his initial message. He said, you know, I don't have the reviews. I don't have the experience. I'm trying to build my profile. Uh, he sent me some examples. I could tell that if they were his, he knew what he was doing. And I went off those in that case, yeah. Very cool. I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> By the way, is Binge Clock the website where it tells you how long all of the... Yeah, I didn't know that was yeah. you. I literally, oh, like, heard of it. last week was what was i watching i don't know i keep going on these like super short binges of baby time i'll be obsessed with the show for like a day and um yeah i looked this up and that's super funny that this is you when you said binge clock like three times i was like wait i feel like i've seen this before that's so funny <laughs> that's cool. huh cool. okay um cool okay and then where have you hired sellers from like you talk about you work with some new sellers you work with some more established sellers are they in the u.s or are they worldwide so i have hired all around the world i've hired people in the u.s uh, my most recent u.s hire was a computer science phd he was an older gentleman he uh he used to be a professor at a top research university and i just wanted a one-hour consultation i wanted to pick his brain get some ideas I'm working on like a video remastering service through BingeBlock. Um, so we talked out, you know, what is the technology like? How do you use it? All of that. But more often I am hiring in developing countries. And I've actually got a list here. Oh, cool. So uh, recently I've hired in uh, India, Morocco, Ukraine. And I mean, I, I've got their permission. So actually I would like to call them out by name. So uh, Chirag Basani awesome awesome designer just does incredible work he's an artist but he's also got the technical skills mohammed sabunji he's helped me with uh scraping some data to to work on uh an app for binge block uh oleg smirnov ukraine and just incredibly helpful he does linux server administration which is one of those things that's just completely beyond me elena kuroko she's an animator brian d'souza is also an animator both very creative, but uh, very capable of using Unity and Blender too, just true professionals. That's awesome. So speaking of this, like you obviously like want to celebrate these people that you're working with. Do you showcase them in any other ways or like give them credit for their work? How do you help to promote them in building their business outside of just your specific project? No, I think that's really important because I think that's, that's a big part of the opportunity that we've had is to build these profiles, to build these reputations. It's our pictures out there, it's our names out there. So I try to give them the same thing, where they've got these profiles on Upwork, but you know, it's saturated. So I wanna do more than that. So I would point to two things that I do. Uh, the first is that I, I put their, their URLs in the source codes of the projects that they work on. So uh, for example, I'm working on this thing right now called the Binge Block Feelings Wheel. And what I did was uh, my girlfriend and I, we came up with this list of emotions and then we ran those emotions through an AI. We asked it, if I'm feeling these emotions, what would the best show be for me to watch? So we got that part down, the database, I'm good with that, the PHP, I'm good with that. But then when it came to the design, that was when uh, Chirag Basani came in. And then about halfway through, I. I realized that this wheel, there were times that you couldn't quite see what was on it. So I thought, okay, we'll put a paw on it, like a, a little dog's paw, and that will spin the wheel so that you can see it. Mm -hmm. And to get that animated, we brought in Elena Kirilko, and she just did beautiful work. Uh, she based it off of our dog, which was really cool. So then if you go there to bingeblock.com slash feelings, Right there at the bottom, actually, I've included the links to Chirag's and Elena's profiles on Upwork. Uh, the other one, so uh, Oleg Smirnov, you know, it's, uh, or sorry, no, Mohamed Sabunji, because he's doing more back end work, it's more important for him to get a reputation on GitHub. This is where all of the developers meet, this is where some of the largest open source projects take place. 
So what I do is even though we're working through Upwork, he's delivering his work to me on there. I'm also very cognizant that if I run this, if I create a repository on GitHub and then run his work through there, that's going to help him in the long term. So that's exactly what I do. That's awesome. And then in terms of like, you are currently doing all of your writing yourself and that's your goal because that's your specialty. And like, we both totally agree if you're putting your face on it, it should be you doing the work. We're on the same page there. Um, do you ever see yourself wanting to build a transparent ethical agency with multiple people and hiring workers to work alongside you? Or do you want to continue to work just independently? As far as writing goes, I don't intend to work with anyone else. No, I just, I, I like my writing. I like doing my writing. You know, it makes me happy. Uh, it's, as long as I can remember, it was what I wanted. So no, I don't really have any intentions to open an agency. Yeah, that's kind of the, the sweet spot I'm in right now is I love what I do so much that I don't really want to like manage. But I do wonder if, you know, like you say, you know, I can do PHP and I can do this part of the coding, but I can't do these other things. So getting other people to kind of connect the dots and expand your abilities just by building off what you already do. So like my thoughts potentially for expanding into like more of an agency role would be to connect with people like website developers or like back end technical SEO, which is not something I do and kind of take your binge clock approach like to my actual services. But just like you, I love the writing side. So like, that's not something I want to stop doing. Yeah. Very cool. And then to back up to all those different countries that you've worked with, you know, and ranging from people with no reviews, not much experience all the way up to like a PhD professor. Um, how do you balance your approach to paying them fairly? And especially with how global currencies, you know, hit into this, like a US dollar is not the same as a Bengali dollar. And so how do you try to do that fairly? Great question. I will preface this by saying that I don't know if my approach to entrepreneurship is conventional, but I'm a strong believer that whatever you put out there into the world, it comes back. And I don't mean this in any supernatural way. I think that there will be science to back this up at some point. Uh, you know, if, if someone frowns for their entire life, in 40 years, they're gonna have frown lines. And I think that if someone operates what I would call an unethical predatory business, then that's gonna start showing up on their face. That's gonna start showing up in all of their other interactions. So what I do when I start a project and I look to hire people is I think about what is the value that it's going to deliver to me and then what is my budget for that? And what is going to cost me money before I start paying people? Not myself, but the people that I'm hiring. So uh, let's talk about binge clock feeling wheels specifically. I think that I'm going to put about $1,000 into marketing it. My hope is that by using micro-influencer marketing, it will drive about 100,000 users for that app specifically on binge clock. If I can retain 10% of those for binge clock over the next year, then I'm going to say it should be worth about 14 to $1,500 in value for the website as a whole. So then what I'll do is I'll subtract that thousand dollars that I'm putting in for marketing and that four to $500, that is then the amount of money that I have to hire the freelancers. So in this case, I hired the designer and I hired the, the animator. I know that's not conventional. You know, I'm not looking to minimize what I'm paying out to people. And I think that is part of our responsibility. Uh, you know, it's it's been such a blessing to be able to work on Fiverr. It's an incredible privilege to be able to write and do what I love for a living. So, you know, call it, call it guilt, call it empathy, whatever. I, I think of it more in terms of, okay, what do I want to build? Who's helping me? What can I give them now to make it more than fair? You know, I always like to think I want to become someone's windfall. If someone is helping me with something that I've envisioned or a business that I'm building, I want to change their life for the better. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, I really have not outsourced much at all, or even like hired many other freelancers. And so right now I just recently started working with a video editor and he actually pitched himself to me and I'm making a video about like how he pitched himself in an email because I get so many terrible pitches and he actually like did it right. And I was like, I get really good vibes from you. I think this is a good fit. And like, I think that my approach to paying him is the same. Like, I, I think it's funny that you kind of think that's 
not normal how you're like pricing comparison because that's literally how I did it too. It was like, you know, how much am I going to be making on YouTube videos? How much do I actually realistically think this is going to be a value for me? And then like working backwards, like what can I afford out of that to pay? So like technically now I'm losing money on YouTube videos right now, but I know that there's like a bigger value for me and that it's not just a literal monetary value of like, I need to, you know, have a $300 profit or whatever, because I know that there are more profits for me in the long run and more value that then I can give that shared value back to him. And maybe his value is more monetary and that I'm technically losing money, but my value was more in my professional approach and the opportunities I get. And so like just having an awareness of, like you said, um, we are so privileged in our position that it's worth valuing more than money and that there's a lot of other things we currently have in our credibility and our persona and our visibility and all of that, that I can then give some of that money maybe to someone else because that's what they currently need that they don't have. But yeah, and I, I really appreciate your approach to like crediting them and asking, like you said, you know, I've explicitly asked for their permission. I want to support them and I want to not step on their toes either. Like if they were uncomfortable with that, it sounds like you are treating them as a partner and a person as, as we all should, you know? Funny that, cool. right? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything else you'd like to share kind of about your approach or, or, uh, any other questions I haven't asked? I just think this is fascinating to speak with someone who's so like-minded. Yeah. To the transparency thing. I mean, I think that this is, it's such a clear cut, clear cut, sorry, clear cut issue to me. You know, when I found out that, and I found out pretty recently, when I found out that there were people outsourcing their writing first, it was bizarre. Because I'm thinking, well, no one is going to put up with that. That's not okay. Something's going to happen here. And then my second thought is, why would you risk that? I mean, this is, again, such a blessing. We can do what we do. I, I just assume that, okay, well, that's not going to last for long. Um, but it seems like it has lasted and that's the I, problem that is the problem and there are so many examples out there uh i've got a i've got a nutrition food bar company that i'm launching with my best friend and we've got these you know wrappers we sell them uh we're selling them on amazon and through the website it's called hip ant so the premise is that it's a date and nut bar mixed with a mushroom blend and we didn't manufacture these. We went to a company called Utica Specialty Foods. They call them our co-packer. And our, our name is on the front. It says Hip Ant on each of the bars on the front of the label, but their name is on the back. It says Utica Specialty Foods, their, uh, their address in New Jersey. And that's not by accident. That's not because we're being friendly. It's because the FDA requires it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a reason for that. I think that there's a reason that when we hear, oh, you're you're getting someone else to do this for you. And they're kind of in a back room somewhere, you know, sweating, doing all this work. Uh, there's a reason that that feels bad and that it, it, it feels intuitively wrong to people when they hear it for the same reason that the FDA says, well, if someone else made this, you have to put their name on it too. And it's because consumers have a right to know your customers yeah. have a right to know where this is coming from who they're actually paying. And um, my other issue with that is like, no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with you. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm No, not... I, know, I know, I know, it's like, it's like that it's game where you just hop from the pillow to pillow, right? And there's lava all over the ground. You don't wanna step in the lava. Don't wanna step in the lava, yeah. Well, it was awesome talking with you and I know Thank that you. we've kind of crossed paths in the writer community. And so it's cool to just connect with you. And again, yeah. I so, so appreciate other sellers kind of like having this approach, you know, and that we see this as a true opportunity for which we are very lucky and that we have the privilege and on the other side, like the responsibility to help others reach the same level of success and, and have this opportunity as well. So I'm really glad that you shared that approach. 
Absolutely. Yeah, it was great speaking to you too. Thank you. Thanks again to Billy Binge Clock for taking the time to talk with me and share this perspective. If you want to support Billy, you can find him on Fiverr as Binge Clock. You can also visit bingeclock.com and he has this new hip ants venture as well. If you'd like to support me, you can find links to stuff I've got going on in the pinned comment and description down below. Thank you guys again so much for your support, taking the time to comment, taking the time to watch means a lot. If you're still watching, you're my actual hero. Thank you so, so much for being here. And remember, you are worth so much more than your workload. Let's get back to work.